Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the Mazda MX-5 RF. In this review, I'm going to start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go over the performance data. I'll also take it for a thorough drive and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as the exterior. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start her up, and let her run. And remember, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like below. Push button ignition is standard on all MX-5s, but a smart key entry system which adds a button to each door handle so you can lock and unlock the vehicle by just keeping the key fob in your pocket is a $130 option. To start, all you have to do is put your foot on the clutch, keep the key fob within the interior, and hit the dash mat a button to go. When the all-new fourth-generation MX-5 was released for the 2016 model year, it reaffirmed itself as one of the most affordable, enjoyable, and entertaining sports cars currently available. It also built upon everything that was great about the prior three generations to deliver a truly awesome product that was perfectly suited for any driving enthusiast. This year, Mazda has released an evolution of the third-gen's power-retracting hardtop, known as the RF, which stands for a retractable fastback. It's designed to offer customers, especially in colder climates, a more all-weather friendly car that can be enjoyed year-round. Instead of a tonneau cover like before, the roof operates kind of like a Porsche 911 targets. The rear section, including the buttresses, raises up and over the deck lid while a two-piece folding portion collapses behind the roll bars. I can only imagine the engineering complexity behind it. It's all controlled by a small switch in the center console, and the entire operation, both up and down, takes about 13 seconds to complete. This top operates quieter than the prior design. It also reduces interior noise and creates a more comfortable and insulated cabin to combat colder climates. The MX-5 RF is offered in two trim levels, including the $31,555 Club and the $32,620 Grand Touring. That's a respective difference of $2,755 and $3,005 for a comparable soft top. Our Grand Touring Tester with sole red paint and smart key entry, the optional interior package, and an $835 destination fee stickers for $34,310. I've already filmed an in-depth review on the MX-5 soft top, so if you'd like to compare and contrast and learn a little bit more about some of the structural changes, be sure to check out the link in the description box below. Both the Club and Grand Touring come standard with 17 by 7 inch wheels. They're wrapped in 205-45 high-performance Bridgestone summer tires that are capable of holding about 0.9 g of lateral acceleration. Providing strong and communicative braking behavior are 11-inch internally ventilated front discs and 11-inch solid rear discs. Each are clamped down by single-piston aluminum calipers. Mazda claims that the front brakes shed 14 pounds over their predecessors. With this setup, the car can stop from 60 miles an hour in about 110 feet. Four-wheel, four-channel ABS with electronic brake force distribution is included along with stability control and traction control. The 4th Gen MX-5 adopts electronic power assist steering instead of the previously used hydraulic system. The steering delivers the proper level of feedback and responsive behavior expected from any MX-5. It's immensely easy to control with a nice tight feel around corners and minimal steering kickback. The overall ratio is 15.5 to 1 and it takes 2.7 turns to lock. The turning circle is measured at just 30.8 feet. It's just as fun, if not more fun, to drive than the last MX-5 thanks to a reduction in steering shaft friction, smaller body dimensions, less weight, and a lower center of gravity. This is a car that's been designed around its driver, emphasizing Mazda's human-centric driving position. The windshield was brought in closer and more upright for greater visibility. The raised front fenders are also a nice touch when it comes to keeping track of the front end. The suspension design is very similar to the previous MX-5, including double wishbones with aluminum upper and lower control arms in front, and a multi-link rear with aluminum bearing supports. 
Monotube shocks can be found at each corner, but with the club you receive higher performing bill stains. Additional aluminum components, including the front suspension knuckles and differential housing, help shed 26 pounds of weight from the new car. Generally speaking, the MX-5 exhibits excellent road manners and superb control on twisty roads. The chassis and suspension is rigid and well composed. It communicates the road surface well, but it's never unsettled or transmits negative feedback such as cow shake. Its lightness plays a big role in its controllability. With a curb weight of 2,445 pounds, a manual transmission equipped MX-5 RF is about 100 pounds heavier than a comparable soft top. To be honest, the weight difference between the two is almost negligible. The car is already so well balanced so you're not going to notice a big difference between the two in how they drive. The 4th Gen MX-5 is powered by an all new 2 liter Skyactiv G4 cylinder. It's positioned longitudinally in a front midship layout that's about half an inch lower and 0.6 inches further back compared to the previous engine to lower the car's center of gravity and sharpen handling. Compared to the transverse 2 liter used in the Mazda 3 and CX-5, this rear wheel drive application features different intake and exhaust manifolds. Like before, the MX-5 has a variable induction system. The block and head is constructed from aluminum, while the valve train consists of chain-driven dual overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, and variable valve timing. Fuel is delivered via direct injection. The compression ratio is set at a lofty 13 to 1, while maximum engine speed peaks at 6,800 RPM. Output is 155 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 148 pound-feet of torque at 4,600 RPM. If you're familiar with the 3rd Gen MX-5, you'll notice horsepower is actually down by 12, but torque is up by 8 pound-feet. Despite this, with less weight to toss around, the new MX-5 is actually a bit quicker. With the slight weight penalty, expect the RF to take about 6.1 seconds to hit 60 miles an hour. Top speed is drag limited to 130 miles per hour. All trim levels of the MX-5 are offered with a choice between two transmissions, including a standard 6-speed manual or a 6-speed automatic with steering wheel paddle shifters. I haven't driven the automatic so I can't really comment on it, however I will say that Mazda still makes one of the best and most satisfying manual transmissions you'll ever have the pleasure of driving. It weighs 16 pounds less than before, accompanied by a 3 pound lighter drive shaft. The short throw shifter is direct and offers excellent feel while the perfectly placed pedals and easy to manage clutch requires less effort to operate and enables quick rev matching. Even if you're not that familiar with manual transmissions, it's so easy to operate that you wouldn't want to shy away from it without first giving it a try. It's part of the experience that makes this car such an engaging drive. The MX-5 Club takes it one step further by including a torque sensing limited slip differential with the manual transmission. Even more impressive though is how this new engine is 25% more fuel efficient than its predecessor. EPA estimates for the manual transmission range between 26 miles per gallon in the city and 33 miles per gallon on the highway. Expect an average of around 29 miles per gallon. Premium and leaded is recommended for maximum performance with a total capacity of 11.89 gallons. Mazda made great strides with the all new interior of the 4th Gen MX-5. It features a wealth of new technology, improved fit and finish, and greater passenger space. The latter isn't necessarily related to drastic dimension changes, but better utilization of available space. For example, the seats benefit from a new design that replaces traditional springs with a net and urethane material. This sheds 8.5 pounds per seat and allows them to be 35% thinner than their predecessors. On top of that, the seats are able to be positioned lower in the chassis to improve the center of gravity and increase headroom by nearly half an inch. The backrest can also recline a bit more, again to make things more accommodating for taller folks. The driving position makes you feel at one with the car with excellent forward visibility. The seats aren't that plush but they do offer good side support and full manual adjustments. The driver's seat also has adjustable thigh support. However, on longer trips I was wishing for some extra lumbar support. The headrests are fixed and, when equipped with the Bose audio system, actually incorporate speakers for a surround sound like experience. The steering wheel can be tilted manually, but there's no telescoping adjustment. Along with having a thoroughly updated and arguably more upscale design, the quality of materials have also taken a big leap. The knobs and buttons all feel more substantial. The plastics are much nicer in their soft padding and the essential touch points. 
Depending on the outside color, the Grand Touring is available in either black or tan leather upholstery. With the latter, you have some red accent stitching on the steering wheel, shift knob, and parking brake. With the black interior, the red stitching is extended to the dash, doors, and seats. Mazda claims that between the instruments and the air conditioning system, 8 more pounds are able to be dropped. The air conditioning system itself is 20% lighter than the unit in the previous MX-5. The general ergonomics are excellent with ideally placed controls that are both intuitive and easy to use. Probably the biggest downside of the MX-5 is that it's not a practical car when it comes to interior storage space. There's some space in between the seats and movable cup holders, but there's no door pockets or a glove box. As far as safety, the MX-5's chassis features a continuous frame from the front bumper to the rear bulkhead that's designed to resist deformation while simultaneously diffusing impact forces in the event of an accident. Being an open-top vehicle, additional reinforcements were added behind the seats, including the rear bulkhead and roll bars, both of which are made from aluminum. There's side impact door beams, dual front airbags, and side impact airbags. Standard on the Grand Touring is Mazda's suite of eye active sense safety features. This includes a lane departure warning, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring, automatic high beam control with adaptive front lighting, and rain sensing wipers. The MX-5 Club and Grand Touring come standard with a Bose 9 speaker audio system. It's routed through an all new Mazda Connect infotainment system that features a 7 inch touchscreen display positioned on top of the dash. In addition to voice commands, you can also control the system through a simple rotary controller in the center console. Very similar in concept to what you would see from BMW or Mercedes-Benz. It allows you to easily scroll through the system's features without distractions on the road. It also feels quite nice in your hand with a partial knurled surface for more grip. Along with Sirius XM satellite radio, there's HD radio, Bluetooth phone and audio streaming, internet radio capabilities, and two USB ports. Navigation is standard on the Grand Touring. Now let's go ahead and see if she sounds. Alright, let's go ahead and shut her down. Next, we'll head towards the rear and check out trunk space. Out back, there's a button to open up the trunk right above the license plate housing. Total cargo space for an MX-5 soft top is 4.59 cubic feet. The RF offers about the same amount of space. It's about a tenth of a cubic foot less. Even though it's not a lot of space, the trunk does have a wide opening and a deep recess. Mazda claims that you could fit two weekend travel bags, which wasn't possible on third gen cars despite the fact that the fourth gen technically has a smaller trunk. In the trunk there's also some illumination and a roadside assistance kit. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the Mazda MX-5 RF. Be sure to stay tuned next time, leave a like and subscribe today, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.